All right, so, so far we've done convex when it's outside the focal point. Why don't we go ahead and do convex while it's inside the focal point? Right. Okay, let's draw a lens. Basically smack dab in the middle of your paper. Oh gosh, why is that lens so bad? It's okay. Okay, there we go. Now, just like always, we draw our baseline. Baby. Yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah, oh, yeah. Close enough. Okay. So then we draw out our focal points. Remember there are two focal points you draw for these each, no matter what, on lenses. Make it 10 and 10 like we did last time. That's perfectly fine. All right. There's our focal point on the left hand side. Which is right. There's our focal point on the right hand side. How goes it Okay, erase those little bits. We don't want them. Oh no, it's not going away. Okay, that's fine. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to place our object in front of the focal point. Let's place it at 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So let's just put it at 6. Why not? Okay, so here's where our object will be. We'll make it a candle again because candles are so nice to me because I can actually kind of draw them. Neat! Alright, now. Dang, it didn't make my lens big enough. That's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to first draw our first line, which is parallel to the baseline, just like we've done a bunch of times. Now, after you do that, you're going to draw it through the focal point on the right-hand side. Just like we've done a bunch of times. There you go. All right, cool. Now, the second line. This is the one where it gets a little awkward. Usually, we're supposed to be drawing it from the top of our candle through the focal point that's closest to it, the one that's on the left-hand side for convex lens. But unfortunately, that's over here. We cannot draw a line. Now, imagine we have a line here, a little very thin line. This line right here, if we draw it towards that focal point, it does not hit the lens, which is the whole point of this problem, okay? So we have to do the opposite. We don't draw it towards the focal point, we have to draw it away from the focal point. Now you'll notice that I planned ahead and drew a big enough lens, totally drew a big enough lens. There it is. There's the top of my lens. Look, see? There's where the lens is, right there. Okay, this line goes away parallel to the baseline, just like it has for eons. There we go. Catch a cha. Now, we label our lines like we have before. This is R1 and 1. This is 2 and R2. And the lines we care about are R2 and R1. Do these two lines meet in the real world? From what I can tell, it looks like they're diverging from one another. So that means they do not meet in the real world. That must mean they meet in the virtual world. So that means we draw our lines backwards into the virtual world. Here we go. In we go. Okay. First one. Second one. R1 comes back. And it goes. Okay. Looks like they meet at this point right there. There is our point of intersection. That means that that is the top of our candle. So that means that we go like this. Let's see if I can draw it similar at least. Oh, whoa! Looks like this is a big boy. Alright, good. Um, not well drawn, but at least it um, shows the point. There's the candle. The top of the candle is where the two lines meet, because that's where the light came from in the first place. That's where it meets. That's where it ends up. So, once again, mathematics. 1 over P plus 1 over Q equals a 1 over F. So let's define our pieces again. We have F was 10 of them. P was, I believe, 6 is what we had. And Q is the almighty question mark. So why don't we go ahead and do the math? Okay. 1 over P, which was 6, plus 1 over Q, which is Q, equals 1 over 10. All right. So we need to move this guy over to here. Minus a sixth. Minus a sixth. Okay, next. 1 over Q equals 1 tenth minus 1 sixth. Alright, now we have to find a least common denominator to get this to work. Okay, now um, there's two ways to do this. Either you can make the two bottoms be the same by multiplying 10 by 6 and 6 by 10. Um, or you could find one that's smaller than that. Why don't we just do the easier of the two? 10 times 6 and 6 times 10. Okay, so to do that, you multiply this by 6 over 6. You multiply this by... 10 over 10. Okay, that rewrites our equation to 6 over 60 minus 10 over 60. Okay, cool. 
Um, you can see it'll reduce down here in a second. So 1 over q equals 6 minus 10. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Negative 4 over 60. Okay? Now, next. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. At this point, you can do the reciprocal. Flip it a flip it a flip it a flip it a. So that'll be q over 1 equals negative 60 over 4. Now, you can reduce this down pretty simply by taking this down to a 2 and taking this down by a factor of 2, which will be 30. So we're sitting at negative 30 over 2. That's not enough, dang it, that's just not enough. So we can do it again. That changes to 1, divide by 2 again, divide by 2 again. This is 15 of them. So Q should equal negative 15 centimeters. Okay, there's our Q, neat. Now, magnification, simple as this. Negative Q over P. That equals negative, negative 15 over P, which was 6 centimeters. All right? So at this point, we take 15 divided by 6, and these negatives cancel, making M equal to a number that I did not plug in my calculator correctly. I just don't want to do it in my head. I have a feeling like I'll mess it up. It'll be 2.5. Times. Okay, there's your magnification. Two and a half times. So, let's go back to the back of the Let's see how close we were with Q. Okay, let's get on here. Holy geez. Okay, if you line this up right here, that's zero. Uh, 10, 12, 14, 15 is right there. Aw, oh, heck yes. So we're good at this game. Now let's check the heights. All right, this is about five-ish. So that means that five times two and a half must equal 12 and a half. Let's see how close we are to 12 and a half tall. It's about 10, so not too bad. Looks like we're getting some good drawings here today.